a grade 10 physical science learners students watching this video uh, we're in our second tutorial video today and we are going to be starting off this tutorial video by looking at the periodic table in more detail all right so i know there was a research task from the previous week on uh, finding out five metals non-metals and metalloids and uh, of course the class shared some wonderful insight um, on those as well but diving into the periodic table periodic table of elements all right it's called the periodic table of elements for a reason because it's a table filled with elements okay elements with similar chemical and physical properties are all grouped together on the periodic table okay periodic table consists of rows and columns and they have their own names all right the rows on a periodic table is called periods okay and they are grouped according to their atomic mass all right they are grouped according to the atomic mass the number seven there refers to the number of periods that are actually present on the periodic table all right seven of them then we have the columns which are called groups so they are your vertical uh, columns on the periodic table and we have 18 of them and they are obviously all grouped within two um or elements are grouped in the columns or in the groups rather um, they have some similar uh, properties over here we have a element block or on the periodic table called cu which is copper okay now you'll see this um, present on the periodic table with numbers on the side at the bottom and on top sometimes the bottom and top numbers we see here are swapped around on certain periodic tables however there is a, there is a key on every periodic table describing what which number is which on the periodic table that is uh, more common the top number will usually be oh sorry will usually be the atomic number and the bottom would be the atomic mass all right the average relative atomic mass or approximate atomic mass the number on the side would refer to that substance or that elements rather that elements uh, electron negativity now the elements that we do find on the periodic table are metals non-metals metalloids as well as transition metals of course which obviously are grouped under metals right just, they just have another name in front of them okay let's go find out uh, and look at each of these separately we're going to start with the non-metals all right non-metals except hydrogen are all on the right hand side of the pt which is periodic table okay hydrogen is the only non-metal that is present on the left and it's also the first element in the periodic table okay non-metals include h2 which is in group one some elements in groups 14 to 16 now on all the periodic tables we'd have the roman numeral here which is four and this would be uh, group six all right depending on how the periodic table is of course named okay old group sometimes both numbers will be there all right but um we're going to stick with the newer numbers so some elements in groups 14 to 16 as well as all elements which is in group 17 old group 7 and the group 17 elements are known as halogens okay now halogens exist in all three phases at the room temperature halogens uh, being fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine are some examples they ex they exist in all three phases all right we discussed uh, the three phases of matter previously in the previous tutorial video solid liquid and gas halogens exist at all three phases um, iodine uh, is a shiny metallic solid and sublimes into a violet gas with bromine br2 is reddish brown liquid and chlorine is a greenish yellow gas properties of non-metals do include that they are not good conductors of electricity as heat with an exception of carbon in the form of graphite okay Nonmetals also don't reflect light very well, with the exception again of carbon found in diamonds, sulfur, as well as iodine. And when they are in their solid state or solid phase, nonmetals are usually quite brittle. Okay, and that wraps wraps up nonmetals within a nutshell with their properties as well as their classification. Remember that at any point in the tutorial video, you can pause the video and of course take down the notes uh, supplied 
um, don't need to try and keep up with me and the speed rather but rather because it is a video you can pause it and we can always uh, jump right back in once you have all your notes taken care of metals is the next group we're going to have we're going to have a look at the next group of elements all right now metals are usually found on the left hand side of the periodic tables all right and they're broken up into subgroups okay where we have alkali metals which are your group one okay your group one lithium uh, sodium uh, potassium all alkali metals then we have alkaline earth metals which is group two um, magnesium um, beryllium uh, calcium or alkaline earth metals and then we have transition metals which exists from group 3 all the way through to group uh, 12 which is the middle piece of the periodic table all right and why they're called transition metals is because their physical and chemical properties range from those of the chemically active metals in group 1 and 2 to those of much less active in group 13 and 14 so their physical and chemical properties they're called transition because they are in no fixed proportion in fact they range all right they, they range from um chemically active to less chemically active as we approach group 13 where we find uh, uh, elements such as aluminium boron etc Properties of metals do in fact include that they are good conductors of heat and electricity, of course. All right. um, luster is a word that is given to, met to metals as they have a shiny surface and they can also reflect light very well. Metals are also or can be malleable and ductile. Malleable meaning they can be beaten into sheets, metal sheets, um, such as, um, for example, if we have a look at zinc, zinc sheets. And ductile, they can be stretched into wire, of course, which we've seen. Okay, at room temperature, metals are very solid, with the exception of mercury, which is a liquid metal at room temperature. All right, and we find mercury in thermometers. And that also gives testament to the fact that um, metals are good conductors of heat. That's why we use. Um, mercury in a thermometer so we can see that when um, the body temperature measure the body temperature if we put it under a patient we'll see the mercury will rise increase because it responds to heat very well as it is a metal and a good conductor of heat moving on to the next group which is called ah apologize there we go um, metalloids is the next group given to um, the group that's called semi-metals, all right, and the word for them are metalloids, all right. They are between metals and non-metals, hence the term semi, right. They are not metals, they are not non-metals, they are semi. So almost like they exist with two, the best of both worlds almost. Substances include that of boron, silicon, all right, geranium, or germanium, um, argon and a lot of other elements there all right sb and po which you are welcome to go and um, research what their names are in chemical reactions uh, metalloids behave as metals when reacted with non-metals okay so if we have a chemical reaction we will have a, a metalloid will act as a metal when it is reacted with a non-metal However, they will behave as a non-metal when they are reacted with metals. Metalloids can conduct electricity to some degree, so they will therefore be semiconductors. Metals are good conductors, so semi-metals will be semiconductors. The conductivity of metalloids increases with the increase in in temperature and as a side note the conductivity of metals will decrease as temperature increases but as temperature increases for metalloids their conductivity seems to increase so these elements metals non-metals metalloids transition metals all make up the elements that are present on the periodic table 
of elements and the periodic table of elements once understood is an exceptionally valuable tool when used for answering chemistry questions as almost every element that we use when we mix reactions or when we learn uh, reaction equations are all found in the periodic uh, table of elements so this is a very valuable tool to understand which um, sections of the periodic table is which group other in other words which side do we find metals which side do we find metalloids which side do we find non-metals as it will definitely help us answering exam questions and test questions uh, much um, easier stay tuned for the next tutorial i really enjoyed this one we will dive deeper into this section and start the second unit of uh, matter classification